Let's talk about new Minnesota Twins, Isaiah Kiner, Falefa, and Ronnie Henriquez. I discussed the trade that brought them over from Texas in detail. So if you're looking for an analysis on that trade, I encourage you to check that out. I'll put the link in the description. But just honing in on these two guys and what they bring to the table, Isaiah Kiner, Falefa, a great beard game, as you saw there. <laughs> uh, everyday shortstop who's shown some durability. He's moved around uh, the field a bit as well during his time in the big leagues. I think he's quick. He's got good hands, a solid arm. Uh, I certainly have no concerns about him being able to handle the position. Um, defensive metrics, uh, very little bit on him. We'll get that into it, uh, just a sec. Uh, but some of the Twins' best prospects are currently playing shortstop, which may kind of raise some eyebrows at this move. Um, but, you know, there's plenty of reason to be pessimistic about either Austin Martin or Royce Lewis sticking at shortstop. So I don't think he's really blocking anyone. Uh, something I want to show here is, you know, what these are two major leaguers. One of them is Kiner Falefa. Both these guys, elite contact skills, lack the ability to impact the baseball. Uh, it, again, hardly any strikeouts, but also doesn't come up with a whole lot of walks. Left is Andrelton Simmons. Right is Isaiah Kiner Falefa. I think it's a very fair comp. Um, for some reason... Uh, outs above average, which is their defensive metric at baseball savant, really doesn't like Isaiah Kiner Falefa. But uh, defensive run saved at the Fielding Bible thinks he's great. Third and shortstop behind only Carlos Correa and Andrelton Simmons. Um, and then defensive runs above average, which is Fangraph's defensive metric, has him ninth among shortstops. Again, I tend to agree with the Fielding Bible metric. I do think this guy is one of the better defensive shortstops in baseball, but it's interesting to note this. Now, something that he doesn't do well, once again, is provide a whole lot of offense. Uh, a 85 WRC plus last year, 100 is league average. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to be hopeful that he's going to improve upon that. Um, there's not much in his track record. There's not much in the sort of under the hood stats, the exit velocities. Um, this isn't a guy who really provided a lot of offense in the minor leagues. Um, he's coming into his age 27 season. So he's in his prime. So maybe there's something there, um, but just sort of take that for what it's worth. And yes, he has some uh, positional flexibility in the past. He's played some third base. He's played some catcher. I don't think that the twins are really envisioning him moving around much because they really, again, really needed a shortstop. So I can't really see him playing much more than shortstop for the twins for the most part. Ronnie Henriquez is a 21 year old Dominican right-handed starting pitcher who ended last year in double a Frisco uh, for the Rangers feels a little bit redundant. The twins have a lot of starting pitching in the high minors, um, but uh, my knee-jerk reaction of where this guy belongs on a prospect list is probably somewhere close to Cole Sands, who I had 13th in my most recent list. Um, so he'll probably end up or somewhere in the 10 to 15 range feels about right to me. Um, I'll have to do some more digging on him, though. Not a very physically impressive guy, as you can see, uh, but Henriquez did manage to throw nearly 100 innings last season. That's a mark only five Twins minor leaguers reached in 2021, uh, so that's great to see. His overall numbers look much more impressive than his 4.71 ERA. It's a very nice whip, an impressive strikeout-to-walk ratio especially, uh, but the 17 home runs is a concern. That hurt him quite a bit. Uh, some of the challenges that Henriquez had last year remind me a bit of Jorge Alcala's last minor league season. Alcala's stuff was always better than his minor league ERA numbers suggested, much like Henriquez. His two downfalls uh, once he reached the high minors where he struggled against lefties, this is Alcala we're talking about, and he had difficulties pitching out of the stretch or with runners on base, both. Uh, Henriquez had those same kind of challenges last season. So if there's something I'm looking for him to get better at in terms of like guts of the game, I want to see him performing better in those situations. Uh, that's going to be really key for him to stick in the rotation. Now he's only 21 years old, so definitely has more time to develop as a starting pitcher, but being on the 40 man roster is going to potentially impact his timeline, much like Alcala. It's possible that the twins will end up, converting Henriquez to the bullpen because that's his most direct path to the big leagues. Once you're on the 40-man roster, there gets to be kind of a little bit of a roster crunch. You kind of end up having to contribute to the major league roster quite often. Now, obviously, beyond the two guys that they added, Mitch Garver is out. Again, I fully analyzed the trade in another video. You can check that out. But um, just from a roster impact, that clearly opens the door at catcher. We're going to see Ryan Jeffers step in as the everyday catcher and Ben Rortfit step in as the backup catcher. Uh, so exciting for those two guys. Let me know what you think. Again, on the, on the screen here, I have my link to that analysis of the trade. I did not like the trade very much, to be honest, but I'm not going to kind of take that baggage and apply it toward 
Kiner Falefa or Henriquez. It's not there, you know, if I've got any uh, kind of bones to pick, it's with the front office. So looking forward to see what these guys can do in 2022 and certainly rooting for them. Absolutely. Thanks for checking this out.